Well, Hassan and Barrington have been out till about two. They travelled up to the northeast to visit the rum distillery at River Antoine. River Rum. Barrington and I, you know, we got here and and we were given the opportunity to see what how the process is, you know, in getting the final product. From the start, what we saw was the people in the fields cutting down the sugar cane. This is a, big, a major field, one of our biggest fields. We normally cut about 12 tons a day for you, sugar cane. Okay. Yeah. We keep, try to keep the heritage of this part of the island intact, yeah. you know. And this is a very, very rural area. Yeah. So you have to try to employ as much people as possible. Yeah. So we have about approximately 40 to 50 persons working in the field. Cutting, gathering the cane, tying it, yeah. bundling it, with, bringing it into the mill. Yeah. yeah. And then it was transported over to where there was this fantastic water wheel. Well, this wheel has been here since, since 1785. That's about 235 years ago. Okay, I went to Tobago and there was one of these, but it wasn't working. But now it gives you a picture. Now you get your sugar cane. You can, I can see what's happening now. Here you have the conveyor belt. Yeah. Taking the sugar cane up to the top. Yeah. And then it will be taken down by way of the chute into the mouth of the mill. Yeah. The mill, yeah, we have the three big rollers here. And as the sugar cane passes through it, it's crushed. Yeah. And the juice is extracted. And it falls out in the tank below, and then taken away out to a pipe and out into the boiling house. Right, okay. When the, sh the sugar cane is crushed, yeah. what comes up at the top, and we on, call it and, yeah. magas. Right, yeah. and then what do you do with that? Do you just throw that away? No, just, we take it out when it's dried. When it's dried, we use it as a fuel for boiling the cane juice. And the bagasse was transported on this old rickety line with a box on it, and it looked like it was going to drop apart. Apparently, that is the only railway line in the whole of Grenada. I went with Whitfield, who took me into distilling part and other processes took place. This house, this area, what is it called? The boiling house or the concentration room? Concentration room. This is where the cane juice would have been boiled to be concentrated. Not very much has changed in here. It has been deliberately kept in this state as a tradition, but at the same time keeping as much people employed as possible. So the juice would have been boiled into a concentrated form before it is sent into the fermentation tank. The fermentation will take eight days. There are bacteria in the air, mm. and with the sugar in the cane, that gets it to ferment by itself. It ferments naturally. With feel, I'm, I'm already smelling some flavors coming out here. What is What's going on here at this stage? And that is because we are getting closer to rum. So the fermented juice gets boiled only to extract the steam or the vapor. So not all of the fermented juice that you would have seen gets converted into rum. All that you want is a vapor. The vapor, and that is what creates the alcohol mm -hmm. that everybody craves so much. But what's the percentage of this of the alcohol in, in, in your rum? You see, normal rum would be like 40 and 42%. But rivers are minimum 75% alcohol. Wow, by what? Yes, you know, like, wow. <laughs> Is that the fire water? Because, no. <laughs> <laughs> With Phil said, uh, we must bring a little sample for Baza, you know? Okay. So, so this so is where we come to the actual tasting part. <laughs> well, to Grenada. Yeah, to Grenada. What do you guys think? It's good rum. I feel like a steam engine there. <laughs> you alright there? <laughs> right. A bit more? He <laughs> didn't expect it to be that short. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right, then we'll feel well. Thank We're gonna so catch up, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? Right, my friend. Glad you this thing, yes. next time I eat, tell me get some water, man. It's too <laughs> short. <laughs> Good <laughs> rum. <laughs> so, guys, that looked amazing. I mean, a really great experience you must have had there. Well, we had a taste in the after. How strong was that rum? 
I thought I was going to lose Barrington for a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> Blow the top off. <laughs> is it really that powerful? Whoa. Wow. That, uh, that powerful? Oh, yeah. Don't. But good yeah. flavour, though. The flavour, it was, it was a sweet but fruity, but it was powerful. So on with the cooking. We're going to get the baking out of the way first. I'm making a cassava pone, which we learned from Deborah Metive in Tobago. We have um, grated coconut, grated cassava, pumpkin, sweet potato, sugar, raisins, um, some cinnamon, some vanilla essence. And the secret touch which I'm preparing here is the um, black pepper, which gives it a nice little bite. You've got the recipe there, haven't you? Let's have a look. Okay, so let's get all the grated in there first, all together. Let's go. You got your black pepper? Yeah. Fantastic. We can get all of that mixed up really well first and really mix it in well. And then you've got all of your spices, your vanilla essence as well to go in. And then we'll look at strengths of flavors that we've got. I mean, it was Deborah in Tobago who taught me about the cassava pone, and I loved it, absolutely loved it. A bit like a bread pudding with, uh, you know, a true Caribbean touch to it. And this is what it looks like. It looks wonderful. I love that texture. It's got that sort of stickiness about That's it, right. hasn't it? And, oh. The smell is, is sensational. And I notice all those little raisins. Yes. And I like this, you get this nice little bittersweet touch where they're caught on the top, but inside they're just going to be nothing but sweet and moist. That and liquid little caramelization is happening. And see, all these happening. great, great culinary <laughs> terms. <laughs> As she baked a whole one, a large one, I want to make these quite individual because I've got to think this is a function I'm doing. So it'd be easy for service and each one then, you'll be guaranteed to get that texture change, that little crunch around the outside, soft in the centre. Whereas making one big one, many people would miss out on the, on the nice crunchy bit. You can't miss that. That's one of the best bits. What do you think? It looks beautiful. It looks Tastier. good. That looks good. It looks good already. You that know what it is? Very, very good. Yeah. yeah. Secret every chef should have always carry a spoon. Quarters off guard. Extra cinema? You've got to trust me, guys. I don't think so. Okay, let's get that clean filmed up, wiped down. Yes, Next job, you've got your list pineapples. Yes, pineapples, and I want honey and rum syrup, yeah? The greatest thing about being a chef is that you never ever stop learning, ever. I always felt perhaps that, you know, Caribbean cuisine was one style of cooking, how wrong I was. As you visit every island, it all has its own personality in its food, its own identity, its own style, and of course, great chefs to go with it to show it off proudly. And they certainly did that to me. One more thing I certainly would like to tell you is last night I said I'm working through the night because it was the only mise en place we could do, our preparation time. I said, guys, I'm going to be in the kitchen at 10 o'clock. I didn't ask them to be with me. 10 o'clock I went to the kitchen. 10 o'clock two more guys walked into that kitchen. We wrapped up last night at about, oh, this morning at about half past two in the morning.